The Senate will come to order. I ask everyone present to please rise and repeat the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. May we bow our heads in a moment of silence. Thank you. Reading of the journal. In Senate, Monday, January 4th, the Senate met pursuant to adjournment. The journal Friday, January 1, was read and approved on motion. Senate adjourned. Without objection, the journal stands approved as read. Presentation of petitions, messages from the Assembly, messages from the Governor, reports of standing committees, reports of select committees, communications and reports from state officers, Motions and resolutions. Floor leader, Mr. B. Francisco. I believe there's a resolution at the desk. At this time, I'd ask that it be read in its entirety and move for its immediate adoption. Secretary will read. Concurrent resolution of the Senate Assembly by Senators Flanagan and Klein relative to the adjournment Senate IDA of the 2015 session of the legislature. Resolve that. The 2015 session of the legislature adjourns NIDA on Wednesday, January 6, 2016, simultaneously with the commencement of the 2016 legislative session. The question is on the resolution. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, nay. The resolution is adopted by the 238th legislative session. is now adjourned. Synodiae. The Senate will come to order. I ask everyone to once again please rise and repeat with me the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Today we are joined by His Eminence Timothy Cardinal Dolan. Archbishop of the Roman Catholic Diocese of New York. He will give our invocation. You'll understand my dependence for prayer at this historic moment, and my dependence upon God's own inspired word in the Bible, the Jewish author of the Book of Wisdom, chapter 9. Let us pray. God of our ancestors, Lord of mercy, you who have made all things by your word and in your wisdom have established us to rule and to serve the creatures produced by you, to govern the world in holiness and justice, and to render judgment with integrity of heart. Give us wisdom, wisdom the attendant at your throne, and reject us not from among your people, for we are but your servants, weak and short-lived, lacking in comprehension and judgment. Indeed, though one be perfect among people, if wisdom who comes, not, who comes from you be not with him, he shall be held in no esteem. With you is wisdom, who knows your works and was present when you made the world, who understands what is pleasing in your eyes and what is conformable with your commandments. Send her forth from your holy heaven, and from your glorious throne dispatch her, that she may be with us and work with us, that we may know what is your will. For she knows and understands all things and will guide us discreetly in our affairs and safeguard us by her glory. Let us pray. You heard us, dear Lord. We need wisdom as we open this legislative session. Wisdom to know right from wrong, to serve you and our people with integrity and honor. Wisdom to work hard for the sake of others, to keep our word and vindicate the trust of our people. Wisdom to listen attentively and speak civilly and purposefully, to pursue justice with special attention to babies and children, the poor, the sick, our elders. Wisdom to pray often and ask the forgiveness of you and people we might harm. To admit we need your help and inspiration is the beginning of wisdom itself, dear God, 
And that we do this historic afternoon as we reverently open this legislative year. You who live and reign forever and ever, amen. Happy New Year. The secretary will call the roll to ascertain a quorum. Senator Dabo. Senator Akshar. Senator Amador. Senator Avella. Senator Bonasek. Senator Boyle. Senator Breslin. Senator Carlucci. Senator Comrie. Senator Croce. Senator DeFrancisco. Senator Diaz. Senator Delon. Senator Espayat, Senator Farley, Senator Felder, Senator Flanagan, Senator Funky, Senator Gallivan, Senator Gianaris, Senator Golden, Senator Griffo, Senator Hamilton, Senator Hannon, Senator Hassel Thompson, Senator Hoyleman, Senator Kennedy, Senator Klein. Senator Kruger, Senator Lanza, Senator Larkin, Senator Latimer, Senator Laval, Senator Little. Senator DeFrancisco, a quorum is present. Could you please recognize Senator Flanagan for a moment? Senator Flanagan? Thank you, Senator D. Francisco. Thank you, Madam President. And welcome back, everybody. But uh, Cardinal, I'm going to interrupt you for a moment. If you would, uh, if you would mind just coming into the middle of the chamber for a moment, please, Senator Akshar. We understand that you have a pension for good food, and this is it. <laughs> I took a wild guess. Senator Axar, who's our newest member, just we want to, on behalf of the State Senate, present you with a token of our appreciation for your being with us today. And just so everyone knows, these are personalized M&Ms <laughs> that not only say thank you, they say Cardinal Dolan. There's a cross on a number of them. And most importantly, there's a lot of Cardinal Red M&Ms in that bag. <laughs> yes, you are. So. Madam President, at this time, would you please call on Senator Stewart Cousins to introduce a new member of the Senate. Senator Stewart Cousins. Thank you, Madam President. It's my honor to, to introduce our newest Senate Democratic Conference leader, Roxanne Prasad, 19th District in Brooklyn. Senator Prasad. Uh, Madam President, would you now again recognize Senator Flanagan for an introduction of a new member on this side of the aisle? Senator Flanagan. Thank you, Madam President. Um, it is my privilege and honor and great joy to welcome our newest colleague to our conference, a gentleman who hails from the southern tier, has distinguished himself already as a great member of our conference. His name is Fred Akshar, and he comes with a terrific background, very diverse experience, a terrific family steeped in law enforcement. And the first time I met with Fred, I'm just going to say this, I asked him what his top priorities were. And the first thing he said to me was heroin and opioid addiction. And I thought that was very telling and compelling that that would be what he would talk about, because that, in some sense, is unconventional. That just happened to be a private meeting. He spent 15 years as a deputy sheriff, has distinguished himself in the public sector long before he joined the Senate. So, Senator Akshar, welcome, and thank you for being part of our conference. <laughs> Madam President, uh, would you now proceed uh, to the regular order of business? 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Floor Leader. As is custom, uh, I am honored as Lieutenant Governor to have the courtesy extended to me to deliver brief welcoming remarks to this body. So I'm delighted to welcome all of you to the 239th session of the Senate. And I also want to tell you what a privilege it has been to work with each of you and our Governor Andrew Cuomo. Uh, and I hope that as you walk into this magnificent room, that you never lose the sense of awe that you must have felt your first time in coming here to represent the people of your district. Uh, whether you've been here 39 or so years, like uh, Senator Farley or Senator Laval, or just a matter of hours, like our newest members, Senator Akshar and Prasad, I want to make sure that you never lose that sense of honor and awe that you have in this room. And also, never forget what first drew you to public service. Whether it was a, some injustice in your district that you wanted to right, whether it was some challenge your community faced that you felt you came to need and fight for, or perhaps you simply had a desire to leave the world a better place. And I, for one, drew my inspiration from my parents who started life in a trailer outside Buffalo, New York, near the Bethlehem Steel Plant. And on my refrigerator, I'll never forget, there was a little sign that said, go into the world and do well, but more importantly, go into the world and do good. So perhaps we can all unite behind the maxim of doing good for the world and doing good for the people of this state. So we know when we enter these halls, we can remain true to our values and to our constituents and to our geographic boundaries. But ultimately, we do share a common bond. And as the governor frequently reminds us, we share a name, and that is New Yorkers. And through our willingness to set aside our differences, roll up our sleeves and work together, we will once again earn and deserve the respect of the people who sent us to this body, who put their faith in each of us. And as I traveled the 62 counties this past year, I can't forget the people whose faces I saw who touched my life profoundly, giving me a glimpse into their world, sharing tears with the wife and children of someone being deployed from Fort Drum, reading to a toddler in a homeless shelter in Buffalo, talking to concerned business owners along Main Streets and Long Island, and watching in awe of a 30-year school teacher veteran as she embraced pre-K students in Plattsburgh to give them a new chance. Those are the seven, 19 million people that we represent here today, not ourselves. They are the reason we are here. And I will close by saying, last week, I watched as Cardinal Dolan welcomed all of us to St. Patrick's Cathedral for a very sad occasion. It was the mourners of Detective Joseph Lem, who we lost in conflict in Afghanistan. But afterward, I noticed that the Cardinal wrote a column, and he called it, A Year of Trials Gone By, A Year of Hope Ahead. Interesting title. But his eminence said, we have a God of second chances, a Lord who never tires of giving us a fresh start. Well, that is why we stand here today. We're closing the door on 2015, optimistic about the promise of this new year, our fresh start. And while it may seem an eternity away on this cold day, let's look with anticipation to that day six months from now when we close this chapter and we ask ourselves, did we make a positive difference in the lives of New Yorkers while we sat in this room? And I say, let the answer be a resounding yes, we did. Thank you for the privilege of addressing you today. Senator DeFrancisco. Proceed to the uh, regular order of business. Yeah. Presentation of petitions, messages from the assembly, messages from the governor, reports from standing committees, reports of select committees, communications and reports from state officers, motions and resolutions. Floor leader. Uh, Madam President, there's a resolution at the desk and I'd ask that it be read in its entirety and move for its immediate adoption. Secretary will read. Senate resolution by Senators Flanagan and Klein directing the temporary president to appoint a committee of three to inform the governor that the Senate is organized and ready to proceed with business. Resolve directing the temporary president to appoint a committee of three comprised of Senator Akshar, Senator Savino, and Senator Comrie for the purpose of informing the governor that the Senate is organized and ready to proceed with business. It's on the resolution. All those by signify by saying aye. 
Opposed? Nay? The ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. Senators Ashgar, Savino, and Comrie are appointed to inform the governor that the Senate is assembled and ready to proceed with business. Mr. Floor Leader. Madam President, I believe there's another resolution at the desk that requests that it be read in its entirety and uh, moved. Second Taylor Reed. Senate resolution by Senators Flanagan and Klein directing the temporary president to appoint a committee of three to wait upon the assembly and inform that body that the Senate is assembled and ready to proceed with business. Resolved directing the temporary president to appoint a committee of three comprised of Senator Croce, Senator Carlucci, and Senator Persaud for the purpose of waiting upon the assembly and informing that body that the Senate is assembled and ready to proceed with business. The question is on the resolution. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. The ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. Senators Croce, Carlucci, and Persaud are appointed to wait upon the assembly to inform them that the Senate is assembled and ready to proceed with business. Mr. Floor Leader. Uh, Madam President, would you now recognize Senator Stewart Cousins for opening remarks? Senator Stewart Cousins. Thank you, Madam President. And again, it's wonderful to be back and Happy New Year to all. It's certainly uh, an honor to welcome you, Senator Oscar, and to once again welcome Senator Roxanne Persaud. Uh, when we began the introduction, I didn't tell you that she came to us by way of the assembly and by way before that of tremendous community service. She has been a committed advocate and I think we might have even had an opportunity to see how she uh, conducts herself uh, because there's been a difficult time and she's been the, the um, topic of many uh, conversations and the professionalism and the courage that she shows I think is incredible. So again, welcome. Her, her family is here and we expect great things from you and certainly from all of us here today. Senator DeFrancisco, good to see you in your new role. Congratulations and uh, look forward to working with you as uh, deputy leader with, with, of course, my deputy. And it's wonderful, again, to be back, Senator Flanagan and Senator Klein. I'm looking forward to a very, very good year. It's clearly the time that we have to come together. It's a new year, it's a new session, and as always, it serves as a restart button. It's a time to refresh our commitment to this great state and to the people we serve. And we are pressing a restart from a year that last year was extremely interesting. And I don't have to tell you, it was a year that was filled with scandal. And I believe it was a year that would make all of us as elected officials angry. The people of the state of New York are looking at us to take concrete action. So we have a responsibility and an opportunity, once again, not to bury our heads in the sand and act like nothing is wrong. This is the time to get serious. This is the time to express our anger and to turn that anger into legislative action. It's time for us to have a major rehaul of our ethics law. And finally, finally, let Albany be an example of good government. We have to restrict, limit outside income because we're here to serve the public. We need to do that. We have to stop using our campaign funds as ATM machines, those of us who do. Again, the majority of us are here doing what we have to do for the public. But the public needs to know that we hear what they're saying and that we reflect what they're thinking. We have to close the outrageous LLC loopholes. And we have to change our campaign finance system. We can move on ethics right away. We could show the people of New York we're about doing their business and deserving of their trust. 
you know, year after year, our conference presents new ethics. We, we have a, so many different things we could do. We've just got to come together and start doing something. This is the time. And when we do that, and when we prove that we can come together because we recognize what people care about, we can also, also do the other things people care about. We know what we're dealing with in terms of raising the minimum wage yet again because we are still talking about millions of New Yorkers in bone-crushing poverty. And we have to lift people up. And I'm happy that the governor has joined this fight and is leading it. I hope that we will not disappoint impoverished working New Yorkers once again. Let's raise the minimum wage. Let's index it. Let's make work dignified. We also have to go back, dare I say, to health and equality of women in New York. I'd like to pass a real, not watered down, entire Women's Equality Act. We need to, and I know, Senator Oshkar, you care about uh, addiction. And so we have to help those struggling with addiction, including horrible heroin scourge that's devastating our communities across the state. I hope we can get together and again do those things. And then we have our children. We have to make sure that all New York children have access to quality education. They deserve everything we can do to help them build the foundation in this global economy. And we have to make sure that higher education is accessible and affordable for all of our kids. We have to make sure that everyone has an affordable roof over their heads that they can call home. And when we invest in crumbling infrastructure, let's not forget to rebuild not only our roads, bridges, but our schools across New York State and truly make New York the Empire State. Senator Flanagan, the Democratic Conference stands ready to work with you on these and all of the issues. Together, we will give all New Yorkers the responsible and productive government they deserve. The Democratic Conference stands ready to work with all of my senators, regardless of party affiliation. So, that being said, let's get to work. Happy New Year. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Stewart Cousins. Senator Francisco. Uh, Madam President, would you please recognize Senator Klein for brief open I don't know if they're brief or not, but for opening, <laughs> for opening remarks. Uh, thank yes. you. Senator Klein. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam President. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to say a very special thank you uh, to our Majority Leader, uh, John Flanagan. Uh, I want to thank him uh, most of all uh, for his spirit of uh, bipartisanship uh, and also uh, for the new furniture. Uh, I also want to thank uh, the minority leader uh, of our institution, uh, Andrea Stewart Cousins, for her leadership as well. Uh, and I, too, uh, want to welcome uh, the new members of the Senate. Uh, first, uh, Senator Roxanne Passad. Uh, I thank you for your leadership and, and your courage, uh, and I look forward to working with you uh, on day one on meaningly, meaningful and effective gun control laws. I thank you for that. Uh, I also uh, want to welcome Senator Fred Ashgar, uh, your law enforcement background. I think is going to prove uh, very, very useful uh, in making sure New Yorkers are safer uh, when they go to sleep at night. Thank you for your service. Uh, I also want to thank our Lieutenant Governor, uh, Kathy Hochul, uh, who has spent, uh, I think, since we left here, uh, each and every day uh, visiting every area of the state. Uh, she truly is uh, probably one of the most hardest working elected officials uh, I ever met. Uh, I also want to thank uh, Cardinal Dolan uh, for addressing uh, us today. Uh, he's uh, certainly an inspiration uh, to all of us. And I also want to thank uh, the hardest working members, I believe, of the New York State Senate, uh, the members of the Independent Democratic Conference. Uh, I want to thank Senators Valeski, Savino, Carlucci, and Avella. Uh, thank you for your dedicated service. Uh, I think it was uh, said uh, before, but I think uh, we are really entering, I think, sort of a, a turning point uh, in the State Senate. Uh, and I think it's incumbent upon all of us 
uh, to work together uh, to sort of regain uh, the voters' trust. Uh, I think the way we do that is by getting to work uh, and doing the people's business. Uh, but I also think uh, we need to reform uh, this very institution, uh, both the Senate uh, as well as the Assembly. Uh, the Independent Democratic Conference uh, this summer has been working on a whole host of different issues. But one thing I want to single out is something that uh, I got involved in along with my colleague, uh, Senator Valesky, uh, in fighting uh, K2, uh, otherwise known as synthetic marijuana. Uh, this is something that is uh, killing our young people uh, throughout our state. Unfortunately, it is still legal uh, in New York. Uh, I have passed in the state Senate overwhelmingly uh, for the past three years a way we can ban all types of synthetic drugs. Uh, but now I think the clarion call has to go to the Assembly uh, to finally pass uh, this analog bill and keep our young people safe. Uh, the Independent Democratic Conference uh, also laid out this year, and we're officially doing it tomorrow, but this is sort of a preview of a blueprint for a better New York, uh, which we're calling New York 2020. Uh, we have Educate New York 2020, House New York 2020, Work New York, and of course, Live New York 2020. And I think one of the things that we start off with uh, is our bold education plan. Uh, I think it's a way to invest in our students, a very important way to invest in our students, uh, through expanding after-school opportunities. Uh, our program will allow 1.2 million children in New York State uh, to attend an after-school program uh, of real meaningful activity, uh, which they don't have right now. Uh, we also have to make sure that we don't stop just with uh, uh, lower level education, but with college. I, I think we've been saying this time and time again, it's not only a New York problem, but probably a problem across the United States of the high cost of college education. Uh, we're proposing uh, something that I think is going to finally deal with the problem. Uh, we're introducing a zero interest loan program called the New York Achieve Loan Program, which will actually create no interest loans for students to actually achieve the American dream of a college education. We also have our House New York plan, uh, which calls for more investment in the New York City Housing Authority developments, uh, as well as to revamp uh, the mitchell Lama 2020 program, which we effectively got into the budget last year. Uh, the best way we can actually make sure that we have affordable housing uh, is to reinvigorate uh, this very important uh, statewide program, which allows various income levels different tiers uh, to live under one roof uh, and live affordably. Uh, one of the things that I think is extremely important uh, that we can no longer ignore uh, is making sure we get more and more New Yorkers back to work. Uh, we need to do paid family leave. Uh, it's become, I think, something that is crucial uh, to New Yorkers. Uh, this is a national issue. Uh, I've been pushing it now for the past three years, and I think what we need to do is finally get it done now. Uh, there's no way we should put New Yorkers in a position uh, to act accordingly to what their heart tells them to do, but what their pocketbook allows them to do. Uh, they have to be able to take care of a sick loved one, uh, a parent, uh, a grandparent. They have to be able to bond with a newborn. Uh, this is something that's crucial, so we're calling for a 12-week paid family leave program uh, to happen finally uh, here in New York State. Uh, last year, we were probably one of the first uh, that talked about the infrastructure needs, uh, not only in downstate, but upstate, but really everywhere in between. And I think the way we actually finally invest in our infrastructure across the state of New York uh, is to do it in a way where we create a revolving loan fund so the money is there year after year and we tie it to good paying jobs. Uh, this is the New Deal. Uh, I know some of my Republican colleagues maybe don't like that word, but you know something? I think now's the time uh, to not only create or recreate the New Deal, uh, but actually improve our infrastructure statewide uh, and make sure we create good paying jobs in the process. We have to do something about child care. Uh, child care is uh, beyond the reach uh, of most couples. And at the same time, we have to not only guarantee that child care is affordable, we have to make sure it's safe. Uh, that's something that the Independent Democratic Conference is pushing for as well. As I said before, I think uh, this is the way we restore the voters' trust. Uh, by truly doing the people's business uh, in a bipartisan way. But at the same time, we really have to restructure our institution. Uh, when we left here, I called for a ban on outside income. I tried to lead by example uh, by divesting from my law firm, which I had for 15 years. Uh, I love practicing law. 
and I know many of you uh, love it as well. Uh, but at the same time, I think we've come a time where we have to make a choice. Uh, are we going to be full-time legislators and serve the people full-time, or are we going to do it part-time? I think clearly what the voters want and what the people deserve is a full-time legislature and banning all outside income. So I think uh, we laid out, I think, a robust agenda. I think uh, if any year is the year that we have to truly get to work, it's now. So again, I want to thank uh, my colleagues on both sides of the aisle, and I think the way we restore the voters' trust uh, is to once again do the people's business and do it quickly. Thank you, Senator Flanagan. Thank you, Senator Klein.